Hi, my name is Stacey and I'm just going to give you a bit of a rundown on the types of promo work you can expect to find in the industry in Australia as a brand ambassador. Um, I'm not a professional video guy, uh, I just thought I'd put together a bit of a slideshow, a bit of a PowerPoint presentation and I'm just sitting here at my friend's office but I think it might be valuable for somebody who's new to the industry or maybe you've been in for a few months and you're wondering what other types of work are out there. So some of the standard sort of things that you can expect to find in the game. Uh, a typical shift is usually a minimum of four hours. Uh, sometimes it goes up to eight, maybe even 12, if you've got a long, maybe a Thursday in a shopping center. Uh, they're typically, uh, it can go from being a one-off shift, you might just be booked for four hours on one particular campaign, or they can go for many weeks, and sometimes they go from different shopping centers around your city. Uh, Friday and Saturday nights, you, at the start of your, you know, at the start of being in the industry, you can expect to give up a few of your Friday and Saturday nights. If you're happy to do some alcohol work, alcohol promotions, um, Friday and Saturday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, sometimes on, even on a Sunday, uh, that's a, you can expect that. And sometimes some of the jobs are full weeks, and uh, those are the big juicy ones that we all like. Um, a briefing can typically take 30 minutes, up to two hours. Sometimes you have to go into the office to actually uh, go to the briefing and sometimes they might just send you a bit of a, a PDF or a video to watch online. So you know the key people, the, the key uh, performance indicators, you know, some of the, the features and benefits of the product so that when you're interacting with customers, you know what you're talking about, it's kind of standard here. Sometimes a campaign has sales components in it, sometimes they have sales targets. Uh, usually more often than not there isn't and you just get to be the fun person that promotes it without having any sales pressure, which is I think why a lot of us like it. Um, but sometimes there are sales, and sometimes there is kind of, you know, targets you know, meet. A typical pay rate is around 25 an hour. It's been that way for many, many years, for about 10 years. Um, a supervisor is usually around 30 bucks an hour. Depends on the agency, uh, but super sometimes comes out of that. Depends on whether you're being paid by an invoice or by wages. If you're asked to do a timesheet, uh, it's typically wages. Otherwise, with an invoice, you'll have to learn how to write up and fill in an invoice and, and uh, manage your own business, so to speak. Next, uh, so the first type of work you'll probably be talking about is like uh, the alcohol one that I mentioned before. Um, you will need your RSA to pursue this type of work. So typically you're standing in a shopping center, in a bottle shop, uh, maybe this girl's promoting some vodka. So she'll have uh, kind of a sales target, she'll have the amount of samples that she's supposed to sample out on that day. And uh, the other type of work that you'll find in this field would be also in a nightclub or in perhaps a pub where you're going around and get, encouraging people to buy a particular type of alcohol. So. You know, maybe it's a different type of beer to what they're drinking and you give them the pros and cons and so on and so on. Dressed in a t-shirt or sometimes a funny outfit to draw a bit of attention. Next on the list, when my mouse works, the supermarket demonstrations and sampling. This is when you go into the shops, uh, into the supermarkets, typically in the supermarket where somebody's cutting up a type of food, maybe the sausages or the oranges or whatever it might be. Um, a really big part of the market that a lot of people don't recognize there's some very strong core work. Some people do this full time. Um, you know, the mum and dad kind of role. They, they, it's more like uh, interacting with the correct demographic that's doing the shopping. The mum and dad. So the mum and dad will be doing the promotion. But quite often, there's some work for younger people too, and you can definitely make some good money with that as a bit of a buffer in the game. Um, retail demonstrations. So you could be anywhere from say Harvey Norman to JB Hi-Fi. You could be in uh, David Jones or Meyer or even Bunnings, whatever it might be, demonstrating a power drill or a hair dryer or a, you know, a vacuum cleaner, a 3D TV, whatever it could be. Typically you're branded up, well you will be branded up, and uh, if there's any kind of sales targets and stuff like that, that's uh, sometimes it's part of that role as well. But you definitely need to know the product because there's people that come in and ask all sorts of questions, so be on your toes for that one. Flyering. Um, this can be kind of fun, crazy enough. Um, a lot of people don't like it, but if you know some tricks on how to actually be successful at this, it can actually be a bit of fun. You can have some fun interactions with people. And it's a nice bit of teamwork as well, because you're out and about and you're walking around quite often on the streets or in a shopping center. Uh, shopping center pop-ups. So this is one of the biggest sort of core components of the industry. Um, this is me, for example, back in the old days, uh, we're doing a Sensodyne promotion. So we took this, this looked like an igloo, and I was dressed as a tooth fairy, yeah, not very cool. Uh, but anyway, it was one of the, it won a lot of gold medals, this campaign. We went to a lot of different shopping centers and we ran for three years, uh, for, for three seasons over three years. And, um, you know, so we set up on, on Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. I was actually involved in building it the night before and at the end of the Sunday as well. 
Um, same with this one here for 3D TVs. When we, we teamed up with Sony and PlayStation and launched the 3D TVs, so we got to stand around and actually play computer games, 3D computer games for, I think this was about six weeks, and uh, we went to different shopping centers again. So you've seen these before in Westfield and whatever, uh, and this is where you get Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. So you can make like a thousand bucks in four days doing something cool where you don't necessarily have sales targets. Sometimes there's a gift with purchase component. Um, but really, you get to hang out with cool people, and there's some, some dynamics about this, about how to be good at this, that uh, you know, maybe I'll explain a bit later down the track. If you're good at this type of work, if you can get a shift on this kind of job, this is when you can turn this kind of work into professions. And I, don't, I know that most people don't see it that way, but you know, $1,000 a week to do something that's fun and flexible is actually really good, but you've got to know what you're doing because uh, there's a lot of competition in that field. Transit sampling, so this is when you sometimes have groups from 20 all the way up to 50 people. Uh, I've given away you know, 20,000 cans of Coke. Uh, this was Craft Vegemite. We probably did 30,000 samples at Town Hall Station between, typically it's between 6 a.m. and 10 a.m. and then you might have an evening shift from 3 p.m. to 7 p.m. catching those rush hours in places like train stations, uh, down Circular Quay for the ferries, or even uh, you know, bus stops as well. Um, really exciting dynamic work and on the back end of this there's something, there's another role called a runner and that's the person that's bringing the boxes of product to this very high paced role where we're handing out you know, sometimes hundreds of samples uh, in a space of maybe 10 minutes. So there's a, there's a few components to this and it's really exciting great work. Transit sampling. So trade shows and expos. Um, you know, there's, there's the Mind, Body and Soul Festival, there's you know, maybe there's a, a building and architecture for her expo, that kind of stuff. This was at the Easter show, um, doing an LG promotion, doing ovens and fridges and stuff last year, the year before, at the Easter show. So this is a really big chunk of work. Uh, you can get maybe up to 10 days, full days, sometimes 10 hours. You know, even if it's at 25 bucks an hour, it's 250 bucks a day for 10 days. So it's, you know, a good chunk of work. And if you're a supervisor in this role, you really make some good coin because there's some uh, extra time tacked on either end. Uh, there's a lot of other promo people working throughout the day as well, so they'll be on other stands, so you get to go and say hi to other people. Uh, but the key to this is really just a massive chunk of work all at once. You can make maybe you know two, three thousand dollars in one campaign, which can you know give you a pretty decent holiday for most of us, which is great. Uh, festivals. So I ran this thing out of Tamworth Country Music Festival for a few years. We had 10 people roaming the streets demonstrating phones um, out of Tamworth. So that was, that's a really cool festival job that we got to do. Um, other stuff you might have, uh, maybe the, the horse races, maybe a Mother's Day fun run, um, Big Day Out for example here. Uh, you've probably been to Big Day Out and seen the V uh, promotion or maybe the Denicity. Those things have been going for a long time. If you're working on one of those jobs, don't expect to be going to the party because you're probably going to have your head down smashing out lots of product. There's billions of people wanting to, to interact with you, so it's a very busy day, some great teamwork, and it's a, you know, typically a really long day, so you make some good coin, and you might get to go out and have a look at the fine during your lunch break as well, so that's kind of cool. Um, Gorilla sampling, this is when you jump in, typically in a branded car or a branded, you know, we're in branded shirts. We had some crazy vehicle with us on this as well. Um, we've been out here with Nivea and we're handing out you know, different sprays to a select group of people. I believe this one is just for men, it's Nivea for men. So we were uh, roaming around different parts of the city and the supervisor will choose where you pull over, you jump out, you kind of surprise people on their shopping day or in their day at work, whatever it is. So it can be kind of fun. We were demonstrating phones here, walking around Darling Harbour, uh, dressed like we were on some hunting thing, I don't even know. But you know, that's Guerrilla Sampling, it's a, it's a pretty common part of the game as well. Interstate tours, so towards the end, if you've done a few, or maybe a couple of years, if you're, if you're amazing, you might get a, a bit of a tour job earlier on in your, in your line of work. Um, I ended up doing this sort of stuff for about five years and I absolutely loved it. I got to take a five month tour for Volkswagen all around Australia. Uh, I did a, a, a one year campaign for Westpac where I went to pretty much all the small cities and towns throughout Australia again. This one we went to probably about 20 different towns throughout Victoria, South Australia, New South Wales, giving away packets of Tim Tams. Um, I've done other tours up the East Coast and it really is an excellent line of work. Um, you really have to prove yourself. I, I've done this, like I said, I think I mentioned earlier, uh, for about 12 years. My last five years in this career was running these things and um, you know, it's great pay, great, uh, you're your own boss and you, you've got some pretty serious stuff to do, but it's really good fun work. Some other roles that you can encounter so like I mentioned earlier with that transit thing, um, you can be a runner where your job is to take the boxes from the van or the truck 
to the activation. And that's nice and physical, you get to hang out with the cool guys and the cool girls, you get to be part of that highly, you know, really dynamic sort of space. Um, if you can drive, it's a really good role as well. Um, you can actually yeah, tack on a couple of extra hours to your campaign by being the driver that takes the product and the stand to the site and then helps bring it back to the warehouse afterwards. So drive is a key, drive and run are very key parts. If you have some building skills, you may be invited to help actually build the stand and pull it down at the end of the uh, activation as well. Um, if you have some makeup skills, you can work in places like David Jones and Maya. There's some promo agencies in Sydney, especially that have a, a very strong, uh, special sort of niche in that field. Uh, you can do fragrances and makeup, that sort of stuff. Um, food handling, if you have some experience working with food, maybe you're a chef or a kitchen hand or something, you can actually be, uh, you know, on a campaign as the specialist in the food thing. Um, working with children, if you have some experience in a certificate saying that you're allowed to work with children, that's a great opportunity too. Um, you can get some extra pay or you can get some niche jobs, maybe you're promoting baby food or nappies or whatever, I don't know. Um, technical and IT, if you are particularly good at technical stuff, uh, you can. I've got some friends who have been working for say Samsung for example for many, many months in a row just because their technical expertise was really good, so be aware of that. And character and costume, this is a great way to Dress up like an idiot, nobody knows who you are, and you can bounce around and get paid extra to be a character as well, in a costume or something. Uh, some specialist roles. If you have some other skills, maybe you do break dancing, juggling, skater, you know, BMX rider, whatever it could be. Uh, that's and even especially dancing. Um, if you have those skills, make sure that your agency or the agencies that you work for know. Most people work for a variety of agencies, by the way. It's not necessarily the best way to go, but that's kind of common. Um, being an MC and a presenter is another little niche market in this field. If you uh, have a microphone on and you're talking at the promotion, you can actually um, develop a bit of a profile and end up being a professional MC and a presenter. I've seen that happen for a few people. Um, if you have some delightful skills with people, you can be a hostess dressed in a tuxedo, maybe in a, you know, a fancy red cocktail dress or something. Um, that's a bit of a thing that comes up too. Visual merchandising and mystery shopper, that sort of stuff is also a part of this industry. I've been asked to do both of those many times. Um, after a few months, if you've really proven yourself, maybe after a year, if you've done a number of shifts and you're on time and you're well presented and you do the things you're asked to do, you might be offered the opportunity to be a supervisor or what's called an infield manager. Um, those sorts of things you typically on around 30 bucks an hour usually and you get, to, you get more say in kind of how the, the campaign runs and there's a lot of entrepreneurial people in this industry so it's a really good way to learn how big marketing companies spend their money, how the public interact, how to manage staff, you know, how to, uh, how to motivate people in your team to get things going. So, I personally love this. I did this for the majority for maybe, I think, at least 12 years. And uh, I think it's a really great way to learn business. I think most of this is a way to learn business. It's a great sales training. And um, and eventually, you know, you might come to a match, which I personally think is the best. So, although uh, there's a lot in there, I know that there's probably some stuff that's missing. So if you do have some feedback, please let me know. I'm here to serve you. I'm here to help you guys. You know, I actually want to really improve this industry. I'm quite loyal. I've got a lot of friends that run the agencies. Um, I've got a lot of friends who work up in those big marketing companies and even some people who are the clients. <clears throat> but if I can assist the industry in, in improving a little bit, you know, that makes a big difference. So please let me know if there's anything that you think I missed out, anything I got wrong, or if anything you think that, uh, you know, should be added in there as well or, or taken out if you need so. Um, other than that, my name is Stacy, like I said, uh, that's it. That's all, folks. Um, let me know. And uh, yeah, I'll be doing a talk, like I think I mentioned, um, maybe on the structure of the industry, and how the industry, the hierarchy, how it works, and also how to nail the interview, because I think those are the two other key things that you need to know to get going in this game. That's it. Have an amazing day, and thanks for checking it out. Sorry it's so long, but there's a lot of information. Rock and roll. Ciao.